What's up guys, Emil Wuchenot here, Ableton Certified Trainer and 2011 Red Bull Music Academy participant. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you guys today about implementing polyphony inside Max for Live. So we're building a monophonic synthesizer basically exactly the same way but uh, with a couple of new objects. So if you guys checked out my previous tutorial about building a monophonic synthesizer, you're basically halfway there. There are a couple of extra objects and um, you know file structures that you need to adhere to in terms of how you're saving objects and uh, patches. And um, yeah, the rest is pretty much exactly the same. So I'm going to be building that from scratch and I'm also going to be putting this guy up for download. This um, is a little bit more um, of an intricate synthesizer because I've got an amp ADSR, a filter ADSR, and then uh, a state variable filter, as well as my two oscillators that you'd be able to mix with the oscillator mix dial over here, and then obviously your gain output. So this is going to be available for you guys to download and then open up and tweak, and hopefully you'd be able to share some interesting things with me. You know, try and implement like FM synthesis with it, uh, you know add some portamento or whatever so like let me know uh, if you if you guys are keen that would be great so uh, without further ado let's get started so uh, let me open up my browser and I'm going to bring in a new max instrument and um, I am going to open this up quickly and let's expand this view I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit so that uh, you guys can have a good look at what's going on I'm gonna take these comments out and uh, let's just drag these guys down over here. So we want our MIDI in and our plug out still available. So um, the most important objects, uh, the most important object that you need to remember uh, when you're implementing polyphony is obviously uh, the poly object. So the poly object actually manages polyphony uh, DSP for patches. So um, if you think about the poly object is kind of referring to a sub patcher that we're going to be building inside of this max instrument. So let's leave the, the poly object here for the time being and let's uh, just go up here to file and uh, click on new patcher or you could press um, command N and you'll get exactly that as well. So now let me zoom in over here just a bit and uh, we are going to create some ins uh, to be able to um, to be able to uh, access it from our max instrument over here so uh, we need to create five in total so I'm just going to create one and then uh, hold down alt and drag these out so that's two three four and five let me just double click so I can rename them quickly Cool. So let me grab these guys. I want to put them uh, pretty close to each other because they're going to be relating to my ADSR. So they're going to be referring to the live dials I'm going to be building here. So uh, first off, what we need to do is uh, let's create an M2F object. So that is MIDI to frequency. So whatever you play on your MIDI keyboard, it would be able to pick up. And uh, then from there, we need our carrier signal. So I'm going to create a saw tilde object. Now uh, we need to connect our MIDI to frequency to our saw tilde object. Now we need to also implement um, velocity. So we are going to create a new object and divide by 127, which is obviously our max amount of velocity. And uh, we also need to create the ADSR that I referred to. So your ADSR is a envelope generator. So this is our amplitude envelope that we're dealing with. And uh, this is going to connect to our ADSR. These are referring to our live dials. I'm just going to hover over the ADSR quickly. So that's your attack, your decay, your sustain, and your release. So let's uh, just connect these guys up very quickly. And uh, what we need to do is uh, we can't directly connect the in over here to our MIDI to frequency because Max is reading from right to left. Uh, we need to implement um, another object called swap to actually set up the signal flow correctly so that we can voice the notes uh, in the right manner. So I'm going to create a new object and it's called swap. So swap position of two numbers, that's what we want. And uh, we are going to run the in into swap and uh, this outlet of the left side going into our 127 
and uh, the route right outlet going into our MIDI to frequency. Then we need to um, uh, multiply the two signals. So we are going to say multiply two signals. Um, and we are running out of our ADSR in here, out of our saw tilde in here, and we need to create an out tilde object. So ooh, there we go, out tilde, and uh, that is our signal output that we need. Uh, let's just give it a number, that would be a good idea. There we go, and uh, let's just connect this guy over here. So now that is basically uh, the outline of um, a monophonic synthesizer, but what we need to do to implement polyphony is uh, we are going to be referring to what we're saving over here in our poly, poly tilde object over there. So uh, what we need to do before we get to that part is we need one more object and it's called this poly. So this poly basically uh, controls your voice allocation and muting. So um, it actually relates directly to your ADSR. So as you can see, you've got your ADSR envelope output that we need to connect to this poly. And if you go to your third outlet, it's your mute outlet. So that basically controls, uh, you know, uh, not, you know, any voices uh, sustaining for too long or, you know, any discrepancies in terms of how you're voicing things. So if you take your fingers off the keyboard, that those notes would be muted and, uh, you know, it works correctly. So that is sorted. So what, ne what we need to do now is press shift command S or save as and we need to create a new folder that we're going to save in. So we can just call this polysynth. And uh, let's just call this voice, um, let's just call it this voice. So this is our patcher, so it's going to be this voice, and it's going to save it as a maxpat file. So let's just save that. So now that's sorted out we need to go to our poly tilde object and we need to refer to what we just um, built. So we are going to write in this voice and uh, we're going to put in dot max pat. And uh, we also want to uh, refer to the amount of voices we want to be able to uh, play simultaneously. So I'm going to put in 16 and uh, then we need to uh, write um, another um, argument called um, uh, we need to write another argument called at um, target yes that's what it's called at target and uh, we are referring to zero which means it's targeting all the voices simultaneously and uh, then another um, argument called at steel and we are referring to one, so at steel one. So that means that if I play a 17th note simultaneously, the oldest note that I voiced, so the very first note that I voiced will be muted because I only implemented 16 notes to be uh, played simultaneously. So um, now we've got that sorted out, what we need to do is we need to save this instrument so we can recognize um, you know, the this voice max pat that we created previously. So I'm going to press shift command S. Now remember, we need to save exactly in the same file structure. So we're going to the same folder where this voice resides. And uh, we are going to rename this polysynth. Okay, so sometimes um, Max doesn't read it, um, you know, directly. So what I tend to do is um, after saving, I'll just close this up and uh, just get rid of that quickly. And let's just grab our um, polysynth uh, where we left off. And uh, yes, there we go. Um, it picks up our ins and our out that we created. So that's absolutely fine. So now what we need to do is uh, we need to build the rest of the synthesizer over here. So uh, we need to create a note in object. So that uh, receives MIDI note messages that we play on our MIDI keyboard. And uh, you can actually see that the outlets are split up into three. So we've got pitch, velocity, and MIDI channel. So we don't have to worry about MIDI channel too much. We are going to deal with pitch and velocity and now you obviously know that inside here we've got 
our uh, MIDI to frequency and we've got our velocity over here. So we need to pack this information so that we can send it through this inlet so that um, you know Max can understand what's going on. So uh, what we need to do is we need to pack this which creates a list. So let's create a new object and uh, we'll call it pack and uh, we are going to bring in our pitch and we are bringing in our velocity and I'm just going to drag that over there and uh, we also need to prepend our MIDI note. So MIDI note. There we go. And uh, that is just going to ensure that the information that Max is receiving, um, you know, from out here um, is transmitted, um, you know, correctly into our poly tilde object over there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a live gain and um, we can actually just grab this guy over here. Let's connect this up. And that reminds me, um, just be sure to bring your volume down uh, when you're busy uh, patching anything, you know, in, in Max because it tends to sometimes, you know, you can find yourself uh, creating feedback loops and, you know, unwanted pops and clicks and noises and stuff and uh, sometimes it can get really, really, really loud. So you just have to make sure that, uh, you know, once you've, you know, um, done patching, that you just keep your volume uh, pretty low so that you can actually not blow your speakers or blow your face off. Um, okay, so we need to create a couple of live dials over here um, to relate to our ADSR. So I'm just going to type LD and uh, we can uh, just duplicate these out by holding down Alt and just dragging them out. Okay, and uh, we also need to select three of them uh, because three of them will relate to, um, well, we can't, yeah, we can over here. Three of them are going to relate to time because they're obviously time based dials, attack, decay, and release are time based. And uh, then we've got sustain, uh, which we just have to go to the inspector. So that's command I. And uh, let's just change the range from zero to one for that. And um, I also want, change, want to change the unit style to float. And uh, we could also, while we're here, rename that sustain. And uh, let's just go in and re rename these guys over here. So this will be attack. And let me just grab this guy over here. That's going to be decay. This is the boring part. Um, <laughs> so that's release. Cool. Okay, so that is sorted. We need to connect these guys up now. So I'm just taking the left outlets of my live dials and connecting them to uh, my poly tilde object over here. So now that that's um, put together, uh, we could obviously select the attributes that we want to uh, make available for us um, in presentation view. So now that they're all selected by holding down shift, I can press shift command P and add them to presentation view. I can also right click and uh, go to my patcher inspector. Oh, that's not my patcher inspector. Uh, right click patcher inspector and we can go to our open and presentation and just check that. So now if I press Alt Command E, we can go to our patcher view or um, our presentation view actually. And uh, you know, you can just uh, set up a basic, um, you know, mock, uh, set up for your synth. We can add a comment box over here by pressing C and just call this amp ADSR. And uh, we could also go to the inspector. You can change uh, the font if you like. So let's make it Helvetica because we're cool like that. And uh, let's uh, turn, let's make this a little bit bigger. So now we've got that at um, 15 so we can actually see what that says and uh, let us create a panel as well so panels um, are just for aesthetic pretty much um, you know it just um, allows you to put it in a nice neat little box and you can change the color of the box so we're going to send it to the back over here let's just uh, put it in the corner over here drag this out 
and uh, let's right click and just select a different color and you can yeah let's keep it like um, a dark more like a light blue that's fine and um, that should be absolutely cool so now I just want to save everything so I'm going to press shift command s and just make sure that I save this as polysynth just replace that and uh, generally what needs to happen is uh, you guessed it we need to close this up um, sometimes it works um, off the cuff um, sometimes it doesn't but um, I've just gotten so used to you know closing it up and making sure that everything is uh, sorted so now we can bring these dials up here and uh, we can test it out let's bring the volume up So yeah, that is pretty much how you implement uh, polyphony. And um, like I said, I built um, something a little bit more complex. So this is what this guy looks like. And uh, I'm just going to open it up so you guys can have a look. Um, let me grab this. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me press um, Alt Command E and open this up. You can actually see that it's exactly the same concept. Um, except for the fact that we've got um, AMP ADSR and Filter ADSR connected over here. We've got our menus, so this is referring to our two oscillators, this is referring to our state variable filter, we've got our oscillator mix dial over here, our resonance and our frequency. We can go in here by just pressing command and double clicking and uh, you can see that exactly uh, the same type of patching um, is taking place except for a couple of extra bits and pieces you know like I said you guys can go in and even take this a bit further you know so we've got our two oscillators over here so if I command double click you can see we've got our sine wave our triangle our square wave and our sawtooth wave going into a selector and the selector is then in turn you know able to uh, be referred to um, you know through a live menu so that is uh, that's quite easy in terms of how you would patch that and uh, yeah then basically we've got our amp ADSR running into um, you know our off our selector over here and uh, we are multiplying the two signals that's going to our out tilde over here and you could see our filter ADSR and um, all the ends that we've created uh, you know will obviously relate to uh, the ends over here so that is pretty much um, exactly how you uh, put this all together and um, I really hope that you guys enjoy using the synthesizer go crazy you know really like add add a couple of things you know make it interesting but um, yeah I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will be back very soon so uh, keep well and uh, I will speak to you guys very very shortly cheers